Today at WWDC 2019, Apple announced their latest update to macOS. It's called Catalina, and I have it installed right here, so today we're going to take a look at it. I feel like I need to be wearing something more appropriate for this video. Hang on a second. Okay, so that seems more appropriate. Let's jump right in. So today, I not only want to give you guys an overview of what Apple announced about Catalina, but some of the things they didn't really talk about that I think are very interesting from my time using this operating system. Let's start with what you see when you get to the desktop. The stock wallpaper, I have to say, looks really, really good, and the subtle redesigns to some of the apps are a welcome change. The biggest thing you'll notice is the new trio of apps that replace iTunes, music, podcasts, and Apple TV. These apps carry over the functionality that iTunes had, but in a cleaner and more focused way. Music, for example, has most of the same functionality, but is less stratified and makes more sense continuity-wise. Also redesigned is the Reminders app, which now features increased organization and tools to allow you to organize your schedule a lot better. Interestingly enough, when I fired up the Reminders app for the first time, I was greeted with a message prompting me to upgrade my devices to access improved iCloud Reminders. But notably, my 5.1 Mac Pro is listed as a device that cannot be upgraded. This is pretty damning evidence that the old cheese grater Mac Pros have been dropped from support in this version of Mac OS. One thing you won't notice right off the bat, however, is that Apple has changed the way dark mode works in Catalina. Whereas before you could choose between light and dark modes, you can now select auto and the menu items will change dynamically along with the wallpaper. You'll also notice two new tabs showing up in system preferences. One of these, screen time, is new to macOS and allows much of the same functionality as its iOS counterpart, such as tracking screen on time, limiting time in applications and parental controls. The other new tab is actually very interesting. It's called Apple Account. Apple Account dramatically simplifies everything you can do with your various Apple accounts and services and devices. This was not really mentioned at WWDC, but it creates a single location to manage all of your Apple stuff. Obviously, I won't go into the personal information tabs, but it does give you a unified experience to manage your iCloud account, your subscriptions, your Apple News, everything all in one place. It even lets you view the devices signed in with your Apple ID, which previously you had to do by going to iCloud.com. Some things you could do in iCloud settings, some things you had to go to iCloud.com. It was definitely a mess before, and this simplifies things dramatically. Some of the key features that Apple mentioned have yet to be rolled out as Catalina isn't going to be released until September. So I can't test things like voice control or find my until we're closer to release and there's a large network of iOS 13 and Catalina running devices. Unfortunately, I don't have an iPad to test this with, but one of the new features that was announced today was Sidecar. Basically, Sidecar will allow you to either wired or wirelessly use your iPad as an external display. It can also be used as a tablet that's connected to your Mac for certain and creative pro applications. With Find My, Apple is combining Find My iPhone and Find My Friends into a unified experience. And one of the really cool features that they talked about was the new Find My Mac feature. So let's say you lose your MacBook. It's probably going to be asleep, which means that traditional location services through cellular data or Wi-Fi connectivity aren't going to be possible as your computer is offline. Find My Mac takes advantage of the Bluetooth that is built into your Mac and it basically will periodically ping nearby Apple devices. That data will then piggyback off of the data going to and from those devices. All of this is of course anonymous and that will allow you to pinpoint the location of your Mac even though it's offline. And then there's the new voiceover feature, which is essentially an expanded accessibility function that allows you complete control over your device using only your voice. And finally, Apple announced their latest step in unifying macOS, iOS, and now iPadOS with a unified structure called Project Catalyst. This allows developers to create an application that will run across all three platforms a lot more easily. You don't have to optimize everything for a Mac and then for an iOS device and then for an iPad. It can do it all right from Xcode with the check of a checkbox. I think that works. Yep, that checks out. And they also announced a new programming tool called Swift UI. Here to explain that is longtime friend of the channel, Noah Rubin. So what exactly is Swift UI and why is it interesting? 
So to give you a very, very brief explanation, uh, a framework basically allows you as a coder to interact with another system. So for example, iOS. And before SwiftUI, the framework that you would use was called UIKit. And UIKit was developed a long time ago. It was made originally for Objective-C, which is an older language and a very much a different language than Swift is. Um, and so it was rather outdated and long in the tooth and uh, quite frustrating in my opinion to program for. Uh, but today Apple announced Swift UI, which is a brand new framework for developing apps in Swift. And the framework will work uh, with iOS, iPad OS, um, you know, Mac OS, watch OS, TV OS, everything. And from what I can see, it's not that much yet, but from what I can see, it looks like a huge improvement over the old way of developing apps. And I'm going to be checking it out starting today and I'm very excited to work with it. Back to Luke. Thanks, Noah. That pretty much covers this initial look at macOS Catalina. I hope you found this video helpful. Let me know down below what your favorite new feature is. And as usual, don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Luke Miani. Please consider joining my subreddit if you have any questions. And as usual, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I will see you all in the next video.